Hi, I'm Maria. I'm part of the wider leadership team at CTI8. We've been looking at a series entitled Scatter Church, and I'm going to be picking this up today in Acts chapter 8. This early church, this group of believers who'd experienced a kind of scattering, a scattering of sorts, this group of people who'd had the most amazing experiences in the very early days at the beginning of the book of Acts. They'd experienced signs and wonders and miracles. They would lived um, in oneness, in community, perhaps in a way that any of us would just absolutely love to be a part of. Now, if Acts chapter 8 were an action movie, it would start to get quite nail-biting and gripping. But it wasn't a movie or a fictional story but a real account of real persecution of real followers of a risen Christ. So what do we mean by persecution? See, the early believers were persecuted not only by Romans, but by Jews who believed they had rejected the faith. Pagans too. And in itself, these issues were complex. But what it might have looked like could be the following. See, persecution might have involved their property being destroyed. Hatred towards Christians was incited. They might have been arrested, some beaten, stoned, tortured, murdered or executed. And a question I'd like to ask is how would you or I have felt? Speaking for myself, I probably would have been full of fear, full of doubt. Would in the battlefield of our minds, the dominant part have been memories of times blessed, treasured memories of miracles and signs, answered prayers. The earlier blessings which sustain when the scattering comes. Or would the dominant part have been the real and present danger Doubts about if God would indeed come through and deliver. So what do we know about what actually happened? The scripture says in Acts chapter 8 verse 4, At that time a great persecution arose against the church at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Interestingly, it wasn't the elite, the professionals, but ordinary followers, scattered brothers and sisters, like you or I. What a wonderful thought. Not so much the concern for our human idea of hierarchy, but real community, as God has always intended. United, pulling together. But imagine being homeless. Imagine wondering what physical belongings do we take? Where are we relocating to? How are we going to fund and feed our families? But you know, when God closes a door, you can be sure that another one behind it is going to open. But persecution is never pleasant. It's sometimes extremely painful. Yet God often finds a way to bring good out of such unpleasantness. And we can see this in Acts chapter 8. The extraordinary thing was God used this scattering, this dispersion through faithful people to spread the gospel on roads built by Romans or actually slaves under Roman rule. How incredible to think that the Roman Empire was to fall, yet their roads still remain. See, God is able to use what is meant for selfish gain for his purposes. How might this look in 2020? Perhaps the World Wide Web. See, communication in the 21st century no longer needs to involve days and weeks of gruelling journeys, but rather new pathways, inroads, created by IT ingenuity. Is it even God's plan that we would go and tell on these roads, on these pathways. I remember 
many years ago um, at Bible College. My husband and his peers would discuss the very question, what does it mean in scripture when it says that um, the gospel will be preached to the ends of the earth? And they debated this very much back in the 80s. And I think now, um, in these days, when I can call a friend who's in Canada or Australia or my cousins in the US, and it can be like they're in the room next door and we can share coffee, chance to chat together, all those miles away. But you see, scattering's not merely geographical. It can come in many forms, through real ill health, a world pandemic, separation, divorce, grief, deep disappointments. The crucial question is how, when the scattering comes, do we react? In who do we place our trust? Are we able to remember the many blessings of times past answered prayers? Are we able to draw sustenance on the many times God has already brought us through? Well, isn't it a good job that God is patient with us? Because sometimes it's really hard to learn the lessons. God can answer many, many times and still we get nervous. I can remember anybody who knows Juan and I and our story. There have been many times where God has literally provided us with a home seemingly out of the impossible. Even two weeks before we were married, we still didn't know where we were going to live. And yet when the time came, we had a roof over our heads. In fact, we've lived in the most amazing places, but we didn't always know until shortly before where that was going to be. And each time I would worry and perhaps forget how easy we can forget when God has come through and answered prayers. Now the early church has many memories which seem to sustain them in subsequent trials. They'd seen their brother Stephen be stoned to death. There was once a Baptist pastor and preacher from Scotland who was invited to pastor a church in Chicago in the US. The church waited patiently for his arrival by sea. He had the reputation of being an engaging speaker, having pastored two churches in Glasgow and London. He answered God's call to go and tell. A widower travelling with his six-year-old daughter. And then the ship ran into problems. He was offered a place on a lifeboat. He forsook the place in order that he could tell the news of the gospel. On board, he ran passionately from person to person, witnessing and preaching, giving his own life jacket to a person saying, you need this more than I. It was, of course, the famous true account of John Harper aboard the Titanic. See, something greater than human strength and courage is demonstrated through such a testimony. Four years later, a survivor told of how John, clinging to debris on the ocean in his last moments, invited them to accept Christ. A scattering of sorts is not what was planned, yet probably the life of a man's purpose fulfilled greatly in one night. So there's something extraordinary when lives convicted of the truth of Christ who died and rose again, an eternal perspective diminishes life struggles, even in the face of death. In understanding that life goes on, we may not be asked to battle the icy waters of the Atlantic, but in scatteredness, what sacrifices might be asked of us to share our food, to offer shelter, to give money, what kind of creative acts of kindness could we show during these times? 
often displacement, being out of our area of comfort and familiarity. When disappointments come, new birth can arise. In my own life, I've known disappointment to precede new birth on life's journey with something far better than the very thing I was disappointed by. We must hold on. We mustn't quit. Are you disappointed? Do you feel downcast? Do you feel scattered? Look up. An old friend once very wisely said to me after I had expressed a challenge, a crisis I was facing, Maria, God has a blessing around the corner. And you know, he was absolutely right. When we have no choice but to hold on, faith grows. What did the scattered believers do? They preached the gospel the good news of life eternal. You don't get better news than that. They started new communities. They raised up new leaders. They spoke the truth. And what was devastating on the face of it, God used for his glory. Just imagine an explosion of growth born from a dispersion a scattering, perhaps new mindsets brought about by unfamiliarity and life's hard knocks, the challenges, maybe with deep gratitude that God has actually brought them through, he'd brought them this far. I was reminded of another story of a boat um, in trouble at sea um, and it's the story of Jonah, who God had called to go and tell to the people of Nineveh. And in his human weakness, he ran the other way. He went about his life his own way. And yet God's compassion for the people of Nineveh caused him to use even Jonah's human weakness to get him to where God wanted him to be. See, God's compassion was not only for Jonah and to do a work in his personal life, but it was in the people of Nineveh, the thousands there. I'm also reminded of the time when the disciples abandoned Jesus and his hour of need when they denied him, when they fell asleep, when they scattered and ran away because of fears and doubts. Yet even that, in it God perhaps protected them. Had they remained at Jesus' side, who knows, maybe they too would have been imprisoned or even executed. But you see, God needed them to birth the first church. So what can we learn? In Acts chapter 8, we have followers of Christ under attack, on the go, going, teaching everywhere, refusing to give up when life got tough. And what can we learn from all of this? What go is God asking of you? What does your tell look like? Who does God desire for us to go and to tell? I'd like to encourage you to pause and just take a moment to remember the times in your life when God came through the answered prayer, in times of struggle, when perhaps you were desperate and you cried out to him and he showed up to remember the many blessings. Just pause and take a moment to remember 
and to commit to trusting him through the scattering and watch him work in your life. Amen.